So we're going to jump back into the powerful closing statement from Sam Stein KC representing, I think he said, 147 sub-postmasters at the post office inquiry. And he's now going to outline the scale of human tragedy that was inflicted upon sub-postmasters and their reactions to the evidence that has been given here, the frustration, the incandescent anger with the so-called corporate amnesia that post office witnesses seem to be suffering from now. The bully boys who made their lives hell as they doubled down in the face of criticism to make examples of sub-postmasters. Let's jump into the inquiry. Let me turn to my client's view. Scott Darlington has summed up the experience of sub-postmasters who have followed phase four perfectly. He said in an interview that he gave to the BBC on the 18th of January, once they knew that things were going wrong and the system wasn't right, Paul doubled down in their behaviour against postmasters with Fujitsu acting in conjunction with them. You know it wasn't you. You know it wasn't your fault. And when things start to come out in the inquiry, and we've realised that they did know, post offices doubling down is like a kick in the teeth. And they've done it time and time again. Clients' views in relation to some of the evidence that has been given. Sarah Ossolinsky, who's a postmaster, sub postmaster at Gare Park Post Office, Newport, says Gary Thomas, he's not a victim, he's a bully who thoroughly enjoyed his role in bringing us down. But John Scott, don't write anything down and shred documents. How dare they? This was people's lives they were messing with. How could they? Sally Stringer, a sub-postmistress at Beckford Stores and Post Office, Beckford in Gloucestershire. Her comments, echoed by every single one of our 157 clients, was this. To say I'm, an, to say I'm incandescent with anger about corporate amnesia is an understatement. Terence Sini said this. They were all underqualified bully boys. It's surprising what people will do for money, sign false statements, threaten people and ruin their lives and that of their families. Only promoted because they did as they were instructed. Let's put those comments into perspective. I'm going to refer to some particularly bad witnesses for special mention. A rose gallery. Gary Thomas, an investigator who told our client Tracy Merritt that she was the only one who had complained about the system. And of course, his notorious email to Graham Ward his old gunner's mate, describing all sub-postmasters and mistresses as thieving and crooks. Mr Singh, who gave evidence on the 30th of November, referred to his email, already mentioned by Mr Maloney, a second email he drafted in December 2013, carried the same theme. This was some months after Mr Clark had written his advices, uh, the lawyer at Cartwright King, and advising then the post office in writing that the prosecutions that Paul had conducted had been obtained with misleading expert evidence. Mr Singh wrote this. Any case begun now will attract some type of horizon issue because this is the passing bandwagon people are jumping on. When we have a few more wins under our belt, the horizon challenges will melt away like midnight slow. John Scott, as you will recall, sir, was the head of security at the post office. He gave evidence on the 11th of October, and what he, what he said in his uh, internal communication was consideration of the post office staff looking at horizon integrity issues to shred documents. I pause there for one moment. In this matter, the interface between sub-postmasters, mistresses and their staff and the horizon system was largely conducted through the helplines, of which there were two, the Fujitsu helpline and the post office helpline. We have sought to obtain disclosure of scripts now for the many years that we have been engaged on this particular matter. The scripts of what was said at that interface, otherwise known as knowledge articles. That seems to be the internal description of scripts. Have those scripts gone into Mr. Scott's corporate shredder? Where are they? Maybe with Mr Jackson at the helm of the latest set of post office lawyers, maybe those scripts, knowledge articles, can be found. 
Well, what was Mr Scott about? He didn't want notes of minutes of meetings that discussed Horizon. And we suggest that throughout this module it has become clear that the security department at the post office worked as the post office's own Stasi, dedicated to reputational protection of the post office at all and any cost, Mandy Talbot. She gave evidence on the 28th of September. She is a former post office legal case manager who was responsible for civil actions, but who deliberately inserted herself in the wider dealings with Horizon cases. The post office's very own evil robot. She was aware that sub-postmasters were making allegations since 2001, but chose to disregard Mr Coyne's expert evidence to the effect that the system was not robust. Stephen Bradshaw. Mr Bradshaw is a current post office investigator at Poll. His behaviour towards sub-postmasters, mistresses, was bullying, we say, and oppressive. Shahzia Sadiq was called a bitch by Mr Bradshaw on the phone. He made Miss Rita Threlfall, who has mobility issues, use a small parcel lift. He's expressed no regret or remorse for his behaviour in his evidence before the inquiry when he gave evidence on the 11th of January. Our clients would like to know what action is being taken by the post office in relation to Mr Bradshaw. Mr Dilly, Stephen Dilly. He was the post office's solicitor in the Castleton case. He gave evidence on the 21st of September of 23. He accepted that the post office's priority in the Castleton case was to send a message that post office was willing to defend the Horizon, the Fujitsu Horizon system. And then, of course, was Mr Daly, who was the post office investigator who advised that Mr Holmes should be prosecuted. Conducting a very intrusive search of the Holmes family home, looking for evidence of a horizon-generated loss, which the post office could never prove. Mr Daly gave evidence on the 23rd of January and confirmed in response to questions from you, sir, that the investigations that the post office conducted were very extensive but revealed nothing. Yet this did not prompt him to follow the line of inquiry raised by Mr Holmes. In other words, that the horizon system had been the cause of the alleged shortfalls. The human effect here on the sub-postmasters, some of the clients which Sam Sam represents, he references in the closing statements, bully boys is how they saw the post office. The fact that the post office organisationally doubled down on sub-postmaster prosecutions in the face of criticisms that they were receiving and criticisms of the Fujitsu Horizon system. The attitude of staff and investigators swearing, swearing at sub-postmasters who are trying to help. The jokes with the legal team about as soon as we make an example of a few of these sub-postmasters, the issues raised with Horizon will melt away. Well, they didn't. Horizon kept on getting things wrong and innocent people kept getting sent to prison during this time. And only now, 24 years after the first bug was reported by Alan Bates, are these facts coming out to see the light of day.